Dr. Brett, February is Heart Month. What's the importance of that? February is Heart Month. And um, it's an important month uh, in that we recognize the importance of heart disease uh, as a major cause of death in, uh, in our country, both for men and women. It's the number one killer. Um, and it's a time where we can uh, make sure our patients are educated as to uh, uh, things that they need to know about to prevent their risk of uh, uh, developing heart disease. Uh, and also uh, educating our patients so that they know what to do if they develop symptoms of heart disease. And what are some of the risk factors for developing heart disease? There are some risk factors that uh, are not in our control. So uh, unfortunately, genetics does, does play a role, uh, as does age. Those things are not really under our control, so we don't, don't spend too much time worrying about those things. But there are several risk factors that are within our control. So uh, patients that have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, cigarette smokers, who are inactive or who are obese, all those are risk factors that uh, are theoretically preventable um, or, or, or can be uh, modified to prevent the risk of heart disease. Among those risk factors, are some more important to reduce on your own than others? I think smoking is always just such a huge uh, risk factor for developing vascular disease. We, we really emphasize that as much as we can. Uh, smoking cessation is just so important. Uh, and then the others uh, are right underneath that. and so. Um, one of the important things is for people to understand what their numbers are. A lot of people we see had no idea they had high cholesterol for years, had no idea that their blood pressure ran high, um, and uh, might not have had uh, some of these routine screening tests before. So it's very important for people to know what their numbers are so that they can begin the process of addressing those risk factors. When you say people should know their numbers, what numbers are we talking about? The numbers that they should know are the numbers that really define what their, what their risk is. So they should know what their cholesterol profile is. That's a, a measurement of their total cholesterol as well as the different levels of good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Um, these numbers are critical to understand what their risk of developing heart disease is. Um, so that's, that's one set of numbers they should know. They should also know whether their blood pressure runs high. They should uh, uh, know whether they, they have that entity of hypertension or high blood pressure that uh, is a risk factor for developing heart disease. Uh, and they should also have a blood sugar uh, measurement at some point so that they know whether or not they have diabetes, which is a very potent risk factor for developing heart disease. Um, heart attacks. Uh, it's about 17 million people a year will die of heart attacks uh, around this time, and that's expected to rise over the, over the years. Do you know the reasons for that projected increase? Well, we have an aging population, uh, and we have an obesity epidemic. Uh, and with obesity come some other metabolic abnormalities, including lipid or cholesterol uh, uh, abnormalities that all contribute to this increase in the prevalence of uh, vascular disease. And what are some of the symptoms of heart disease or, uh, if you're, or heart problems? Symptoms are, are, can be variable, but there are some symptoms that are common. Um, uh, the classic symptoms of people who have developed the most common type of uh, heart problem, which is coronary disease, is chest pain or chest pressure or tightness, particularly uh, when the heart is being asked to do more, so with exertion uh, or sometimes just with emotional stress. A lot of times uh, other symptoms go along with uh, that chest discomfort, so sweatiness, nausea, shortness of breath, uh, all can be seen uh, along with those chest symptoms. Um, uh, not everybody presents with those classic symptoms. Those are the easy uh, ones to recognize. Uh, but some people, and particularly women, seem to have a higher instance of this, will have symptoms that are less uh, classic. Uh, and they might just feel poorly. They might just feel very weak and nauseated and think it may be, may be something not related to their heart. So you don't have to have all of those symptoms to think you're having a heart attack. That's absolutely right. Uh, and particularly in uh, people who have several cardiac risk factors, if they do develop some of these symptoms, um, uh, they should be thinking that, you know, this might be something related to my heart. And how does someone distinguish, let's say, indigestion from chest pain uh, from a heart attack? Gastrointestinal problems like uh, heartburn and reflux are notoriously uh, difficult to differentiate from um, more serious types of heart problems. Uh, and uh, there's been countless examples of people who come in with their heart attack and say, I, I thought it was just heartburn. Um, so again, I think people that, ha that have risk factors for developing the problem, who develop heartburn where maybe they haven't really had it before, or there's something about it that feels different or it's more severe, uh, they should think, maybe I better get checked out and make sure this isn't my heart. What goes into uh, an evaluation? If a patient comes in and they haven't had a heart attack, but they think there might be something wrong, what sort of goes into that evaluation process? We have very good testing for, uh, for um, heart problems here at Mercy. 
uh, if a patient were to come in with uh, chest discomfort, uh, a combination of uh, an electrocardiogram, which is an EKG, a very easy test to do, uh, along with some uh, simple blood tests, often make it clear right off the bat uh, whether their symptoms are related to their heart or not. And if somebody has the symptoms, what should they do? Well, time is of the essence if people are having symptoms that reflect uh, a heart attack. The, uh, a heart attack uh, means a coronary vessel, a blood vessel feeding the heart is, uh, is obstructed or, or, uh, or clotted off and the heart's not getting good blood flow. And the longer that happens, the more heart damage there is and, and the deadlier the heart attack can be. So time is, uh, is of the essence and if patients have symptoms that they're suspicious may be related to the heart and are lasting for, for more than just a few minutes, that's the time to call 911 and come to the hospital to get checked out. And uh, after, if somebody does have a heart attack, what's sort of the post-attack uh, treatments that, and uh, lifestyle changes that they need to go through? Lots of different treatments for heart attack. The, uh, the treatment of heart attack has evolved uh, fantastically so over the last uh, several years and decades. Um, uh, but um, uh, so it's very variable depending on what type of heart attack somebody has. Um, after somebody is treated acutely for their heart, uh, heart attack, then there's lots of things that they need to do in terms of uh, lifestyle intervention. So correcting risk factors, uh, sometimes that can be just with uh, modification of their lifestyle, sometimes it's with medications, usually it's with both, uh, become paramount. And what's the trend in survival rates for people who have had heart attacks? We've done really well uh, treating people with heart attack and the survival rate has uh, just gotten better every year. Uh, partly because of educational programs like this, people uh, being uh, quicker to understand the symptoms of heart attack and coming in to get help, uh, and partly because our treatments have gotten better, and partly because uh, this emphasis on prevention uh, has, has become so strong. Now, February is heart month, but people need to be uh, cognizant of these things all the time. <laughs> that's exactly right. This is uh, not the only month we see problems, obviously, um, but that's, that's right. But it's a good time for public awareness, um, and I think um, uh, there's no question that if patients know what their risk factors are, know what their numbers are, um, the goal is to actually have them come in and see us before their heart attack so that we can uh, prevent that from happening. Um, here at Mercy Cardiology, we uh, see patients uh, like that quite a bit. Uh, they'll come in um, uh, concerned that they might have some of these risk factors or concerned that somebody in their family had early heart problems. Uh, and there's lots of uh, testing and, and, and therapies that can really change the course of, uh, uh, of them having a heart problem. If people want more information about Mercy's uh, cardiology program, where can they go for that information? Well, I'd uh, recommend our website uh, or to call our department and we'd be happy to see them. They can also talk to their primary care physician about setting up a referral to see one of the Mercy cardiologists uh, to help them with these prevention efforts.